Hey everyone, what's good? Welcome to my Morrowind video guide all about armor, blocking, and just mitigating physical damage in general. As with most role-playing games, there are generally two types of players when it comes to armor and equipment. First, those who prefer form over function, and secondly, those who prefer function over form. This video will likely prove most useful to the latter group. However, if you're like me, and usually comprise the former group when it comes to single-player experiences, well, there's still plenty of useful information that will help you get more out of playing the way you want. And of course, just like with all of my other guide videos, I'll have timestamps in the description if you need them. We'll start off by ensuring that we have an understanding of the fundamentals of Armor and Morrowind. If you're accustomed to armor systems used in later games in the series, there's some less than obvious differences to be mindful of. It's important to know what slots you have available for equipping armor to begin with. Armor consists of a chest piece, a helmet, pauldrons, greaves, boots, gloves, and a shield. Right away, there's a few important things to note. That being, pauldrons and gloves both have left and right versions that will each need to be equipped. For whatever reason, Boots and Greaves do not share this same left and right slot distinction. The next important caveat is that if you decided to play as one of the two beast races, that being Argonian and Khajiit, your character flat out cannot equip any boots, nor can your character equip roughly two-thirds of all helmets in the game. This is a pretty substantial disadvantage because of how it limits your enchanting. It's also important to know that you can equip most articles of clothing along with your armor, except for your gloves and shoes. That's because they fill the same slots on your character as their armor counterparts. Finally, your shield is always considered as a traditional armor slot. What this means is that even if you're using magic or a weapon that requires two hands, you can still technically have a shield equipped. You won't be able to block with an equipped shield in a situation like that, but your character will still be impacted by any armor rating or enchantments that your equipped shield provides. This is extremely important to keep in mind as you begin enchanting your equipment, because shields have the highest potential for enchanting out of any items in the whole game. The Daedric Tower Shield, specifically, has by leaps and bounds the greatest capacity for enchantment out of any item in the game. Now that we're familiar with the basics, we'll move on to more intermediate understandings of how armor works in Morrowind. In your character menus, beneath the image of your character, you'll see your current armor value. This armor value is what's used directly in damage calculation formulae. However, be careful that you don't confuse it with the concept of armor rating. Armor rating is essentially what you see displayed on tooltips for individual pieces of armor. The armor value shown beneath your character is the result of running that armor rating through a couple of formulae. On screen now is one of two formulae that are used first. Base AR in this formula represents the armor rating displayed on an item's tooltip. Armor skill is, quite simply, your skill in the corresponding armor class. Because of how the formula uses your own skill levels, you can significantly boost the effectiveness of your armor with Fortify Armor effects. We should also cover Shield Spell effects from the Alteration School of Magic. Shield Spell effects raise your character's armor rating by the amount listed in its tooltip. This value isn't weighted when it contributes to your armor, like how physical pieces of armor are. We'll cover a bit more of that later on. Now, if you have an armor equipment slot that's either empty or occupied by clothing, your unarmored skill is, of course, taken into account instead. Due to its nature, unarmored uses a separate formula than the one we just covered. It's on screen now. Remember, that shields do count as an armor slot, even if you're using a weapon that prevents you from blocking. Going around without a shield equipped means you'll be using unarmored for that specific shield slot. 
It's also very important to note that if you aren't using the unofficial Morrowind code patch, there is a bug that makes your unarmored skill completely worthless if your character doesn't have at least one actual piece of armor equipped. From this point, the results of either of those two formulae contribute to the armor value you see on your menus. That said, not every piece of armor is weighted equally in this, as we were talking a little bit about earlier. Your chest piece constitutes the largest contribution at 30%. Each of your gauntlets contribute the smallest at just 5% each. Everything else, including your shield, comes in at 10%. The result of all this is what appears on your character menu, and it's what's used in the various damage formulae. What's less apparent is that these percentages also affect what part of your armor is going to be impacted by an incoming blow and subsequently lose condition. This also means that you'll gain experience in that same corresponding slot's armor class. Before we move on to blocking, there's a few final things to know about armor. First, the physical damage mitigation provided by armor is hard capped at 75%. So you'll always be taking at least 25% damage from any incoming physical attack that lands. Also, points of armor rating are subjected to diminishing returns. That said, there's still immense value in typically heavier armor as it usually has a high capacity for enchanting. Because the only downside to wearing heavy armor in Morrowind is that you're encumbered more and thus move a bit slower, it's usually a good idea to try and equip the heaviest armor possible and still move at a speed that's comfortable to you. Keep in mind that the enchanting capacity on heavier armor can also be used to alter your character's encumbrance and overcome the downsides of using that heavy armor. Because an armor's potential for enchanting is perhaps the most important stat for most players, on screen now is a list of those pieces of armor with the absolute highest capacity and their corresponding values. Keep an eye out for these pieces of equipment as you're playing the game. There's a few important takeaways from this information. Generally speaking, Daedric armor is either a solid option or just flat out the best option. Of course, as you can see, there are several exceptions to this. Also, only the right adamantium pauldron sports that 10-point capacity. The left one, for whatever reason, only sports a 3-point capacity. Finally, we'll move on to how blocking works in Morrowind. Unlike later games in the series, blocking in Morrowind is randomly performed automatically when you have a shield and one-handed weapon equipped. It's important to note that lights, like torches and lanterns, take up the shield slot. As mentioned earlier, even if you are using a two-handed weapon, it's still very much worth it to equip a shield, if you can manage the encumbrance, because it still provides armor and any constant effect enchantments on that same shield. Your character also cannot ever block any spells or projectiles from ranged and thrown weapons. When it comes to melee attacks, blocking can only occur roughly 90 degrees to the left of your centered crosshair, and roughly 30 degrees to the right of it. When your character does block an attack, you take zero damage, and instead, your shield's condition takes the full, unmitigated damage of the blocked attack. So what this means is that once you have a significant block chance, you may find your shield breaking pretty quickly. Speaking of which, block chance itself is hard capped between 10 and 50%. So even if you have very poor skill in blocking, you'll always block a minimum of 10% of all incoming melee attacks if you equip a shield. Now we'll check out the block formula itself. It's actually surprisingly complicated. At the simplest level, you subtract the attacker's hit chance from your own block rating. The difference is your block chance. Once that number is calculated, another number is randomly generated out of 100. 
If your block chance is higher than that random number, then your character blocks the incoming attack. Remember though, your block chance can never be higher than 50 or lower than 10. On screen now are the formulae used to calculate your block rating and your attacker's hit chance. As with all formulae in my guide videos, it's ridiculous to expect anyone to sit down and just start plugging in the numbers before every engagement. So instead, we can use this information to make some general conclusions to keep in mind as we're playing the game. First of all, your block skill is your baseline block chance before any movement or fatigue modifiers. From there, every 5 points of agility and every 10 points of luck increase that block chance by 1. Next, we can see that a character's block chance is actually impacted by their current direction of movement. Whenever your character is standing still or moving in any direction other than forward, you receive a bonus to your block chance. It's pretty weird. Then, as is usually the case, your current fatigue relative to your maximum fatigue impacts your block chance. Finally, by looking at the attacker's hit chance, we can tell that debuffing a melee combatant's corresponding weapon skill, agility, luck, or their current fatigue will get us a higher chance to block their incoming attacks. Alright, I think that covers just about everything on armor, blocking, and mitigating physical damage in Morrowind. I've got a slew of other Morrowind guide videos as well. Give them a look and see if any might have something useful to you. I also have going a weekly playthrough of Morrowind on max difficulty. Give it a watch, or give it a listen. There's little in the way of audio in Morrowind, so you can pretend like we're playing along together. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Alright, peace!